haven't been struck by the last verse of Psalm 78, which says, And David shepherded them with integrity of heart, with skillful hands he led them. And, and that speaks to me about the way that we do ministry, as a sense of integrity and a desire to serve well, skillfully. The call to discipleship is a call to ongoing growing with Jesus. And a call into ministry is a privilege, a particular kind of privilege of serving Jesus. And we're called to grow in that. And I like to think of heart and head and mind, of growing in our spiritual awareness of God and who he is and his work in our lives, of our minds of being enriched and, and, and thinking through the things of God and the way that we serve, and our hands, our abilities, and all kinds of different abilities we use. It seems to me that CMD, Continuing Ministerial, ministerial Development, although it's a requirement for us as accredited ministers, it's also a good means of helping us focus on growing. Paul, I just want to ask you, how, how have you grown uh, in the last couple of years? I'm not talking about any weight you might put on because of the pandemic, but how do you think you've grown as a minister in the last couple of years? Well, I'll add my own scripture reference as well first, which is the end of uh, chapter two of Luke, which talks about Jesus growing in stature and in wisdom and in favour with God and in favour with people. And uh, so for me, just to echo, CMD is about uh, growth and uh, uh, wholeness and, and uh, well-being. Um, so have I grown? Um, I haven't put any weight on because one of the things I have done is I've, I've had a discipline of physical activity. Uh, so I do go running uh, and I do go, do quite a bit of walking. Uh, and that's part of my regimen for, for well-being. Uh, it's been particularly important during the pandemic uh, to have a daily walk, for example. Um, if I think back over two years, I guess for me, the highlight is having had a sabbatical. Uh, and through the sabbatical, I was able to uh, do two things in particular. One was to walk the Camino de Santiago and the other was to work through the Ignatian spiritual exercises. And, and both those have been quite profound and quite deeply uh, impactful of my life and, and have, I would say, grown me in my praying, uh, in, in some of my spiritual disciplines, uh, in some of my well-being and health, and also given me a greater sense of what my current calling is and a and, and sense of what God is wanting me to do in my life. So uh, I would say I've grown quite a lot over the last couple of years. And that's all been in the context of people who've um, accompanied me. So when I did the initial exercises, I had a, a spiritual uh, accompanier who, who took me through that. Um, and, and, and when I was on the Camino, I was with other people who helped me reflect on that and have done so since and have joined some groups that, that have aided that. So it, it's not just what I've done in isolation, but what I've also done uh, in, in partnership and in connection with other people as well. It's been really helpful. Paul, I think I picked up a real sense of, of integrity about what you've just shared because it's about going, it seems to me it's been, it's been about going deeper, but also about being equipped to serve and to relate and, and to engage with others. Um, in terms of CMD, I mean, how do you re re react to the very phrase CMD? Uh, it can sound a bit institutional. Um, it can sound a bit like uh, w we're being kind of forced into a, a more professional way of, uh, of operating. Um, and, and I think we need to get past that. We need to, to recognize this is, uh, um, a well-being tool that's being developed out of good concern for, for us as ministers and, and, it, and it's a loving um, uh, structure and, and structure that's flexible, a structure that's, uh, that's just there to, to make sure that we do the good work of looking after ourselves um, and, and sometimes we can be so focused on ministry out towards others that we neglect uh, our own selves. So uh, it's a reminder that actually to be effective in ministry, the first person we need to minister to is ourselves. Uh, and allow God to minister to us uh, as, as, as ministers. So uh, it's, 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 a, it's there, I think, to, to give us a bit of impetus, because otherwise, I, knowing myself and knowing others, we could have good intentions, but never put them into practice. Yeah. Uh, and this is the tool that helps us to get from the, the good intentions into the practice. I like the two words that you've used there of, of impetus and tools. It, it provides that uh, 
uh, stimulus for what we know we should be doing anyway, and also the tools by which we can do that. I mean, since I came into ministry, people have talked about growing as a Christian, growing as ministers, developing ourselves. So that's not new. As we've talked about uh, what's now called CMD in our Baptist family, we've talked about uh, um, continuing professional development. We didn't like that because it sounded too professional and institutional. We talked about continual personal development, but we weren't sure about that because it lacked the emphasis on ministry and that it is about personal development. And we've come to CMD. And behind CMD, Paul, I don't want to put you on the spot too much, but uh, there are five habits of continuing ministry or development. Can you remind me what they are, please? Uh, yes, I, I use the acronym CLARA, which is not the, the uh, um, order that they're, they're, they're in the official documents. But if you think of uh, um, the, the co-principal of Northern Baptist College, um, then uh, the, 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 the five letters C-L-A-R-A help me to remember. So C is connectivity, which is about connecting uh, with others, particularly in our Baptist family. The L is about learning. What are we learning? So more the, the, the head and the mind. The A is attentiveness, so being aware of yourself and allowing God to, uh, awareness of God as well. Um, the R is, is a review, that you are engaged in some kind of review procedure. And the last A is about accountability, that there's somebody that you, you connect with who helps you uh, through this. And maybe more than one person, different uh, structures of accountability. I, and it seems to me, just listening to them, even though I've read them, it brought together the two texts that we brought earlier of, of, about David and Jesus, about our growth, and uh, it, both both being accountable to our Heavenly Father in different ways, and we're accountable to each other as we seek God's will in our lives. Now, I know, Paul, that you, know, you and I have both enrolled in CMD, so, you know, big tick for us both, big, big, big gold star if we were in primary school back in our day, or smiley face, whatever you get these days. Um, so well done. And we want to encourage others. Um, in doing that enrollment, there was actually a review over the last year. So how helpful and well, how easy was it to actually enroll and to do the first review? I did feel a certain amount of um, responsibility as a regional minister that, that, that I should be uh, uh, in the first wave to encourage others to do it. Uh, the, the challenge, I think, for many of us is, is thinking of who your accountability partner is for the review. Uh, it took me a little while to uh, um, uh, uh, pray about it and then approach somebody and for that person to say yes. Um, but I'm really delighted. I've got somebody that I, who's another regional minister in another part of the country. And uh, there's a lot that we share in common, a lot of interests we have in common. And uh, so what I did basically was um, what you have to do is you have to go online. You have to use the uh, CMD uh, site of the Baptist Union uh, website to find the uh, email address. So I think it basically goes to Tim Ferguson, but it's it's unlike cmd at baptist.org.uk. Uh, you send an email there, just say, I want to register for CMD, and that gets you enrolled. And that, that, that's helpful for, uh, uh, for Baptist Ministries Department to know that you are uh, enrolling. And then the second thing <clears throat> you then need to do is organise this review with your um, review partner, uh, and the review looks back at the last 12 months, uh, what you've done in those five areas, and then you look forward uh, to the coming five months, uh, coming 12 months with those five areas. Uh, and, I, and we found it really helpful, both of us, actually, that uh, um, firstly, looking back, you recognise actually a lot of the things that you do um, fall into these categories anyway. So uh, inevitably, as a regional minister, I'm well connected into the Baptist family. Uh, the connectivity is, is, is a given, really. Um, and uh, I have lots of different structures of accountability. I have a spiritual director. I have a, a peer mentoring group, people I trained at college with, four of us who meet twice a year and, and, and pray and, and, and share together. I've got a prayer group I'm part of. I've got uh, uh, various other groups. I've had a, an annual appraisal with uh, my role in the association. So those things are already happening. So it's just encouraging to think, actually, uh, I'm doing a lot of what is uh, encouraged anyway. So. It, it, it helped me to feel, well, I'm, I'm on the right lines. There's still more that can be done, but uh, it, it was a positive experience. I think it's just helpful to, to pause and reflect and think, well, where do I want to grow? Where do I want to move forward in the coming year? Uh, for me, particularly around learning and, and, and what do I want to learn? Uh, what, where do I want to uh, 
give my attention to um, uh, to grow and to develop. So, so looking forward uh, to this year, it was really helpful to um, set a, set a, set some goals and targets. So I tended to do that anyway at the beginning of the year, but I think just to be a bit more focused and disciplined about it, and also have somebody that I'm doing it with, so that I know that my partner uh, is going to. Um, ask me about these things in 12 months. Actually, we decided we didn't want to wait 12 months that we're going to meet up every probably four months and just just touch base with each other and say, how is it? How are you getting on? And that that just helps that process of uh, um, keeping these things in mind and, and, and not losing them through the busyness and all the different activities that go uh, on through the year. And also, I think go on, that go you on. need to uh, um, sometimes change and tweak them through the year. That, that what what you aim to do at the start of one year might be different as you as you go through the year and other things happen and life changes. Yeah, I thought what's really helpful from that, what you just said, Paul, is it is a moment of, of, of pause and reflection to look back and to look forward. The simplicity of that, the enrichment of that, and also um, the sense that actually many of us are already doing lots of these things. So. It can feel quite heavy that we've got suddenly take on lots of other things. We've either got to go to a particular conference or a webinar, or we've got to, uh, you know, enrol for a course. Actually, much stuff we're already doing, but there will be op other opportunities as well. Um, Paul, I'm going to ask you just to give a final word of encouragement for us to uh, do um, want to get enrolled in the CMD. But just before you do, just list off a few different options that people might already be doing or might do to help them in their own development as ministers? Yeah, well, uh, if we think of those five categories, I mean, connection, um, then please get involved in our ministers fellowship or uh, uh, maybe a, a more local one uh, with, with, with other Baptist ministers, or you can uh, get involved in some aspect of association life. We're always on the lookout for uh, the wisdom and the, uh, uh, the input of, of, of our ministers. Um, the learning, that can be conferences, it can be blogs, vlogs, it can be uh, reading, it can be uh, um, engagement in, in uh, um, web meetings, all kinds of things. Uh, hopefully live things uh, as we get out of the pandemic restrictions. Um, the attentiveness is about your prayer life and uh, uh, I think it's always good to, to just think, well, how is my prayer life? And, and maybe even to talk to somebody about it. Prayer is often a very private thing. Um, uh, who can you talk to about your prayer life? Actually, to have a, a partner that's with you in this is, is really helpful. Uh, and obviously, prayer is unique to each one of us. So, so how I pray uh, is going to be different to how you pray, John. Uh, yeah. and, and how I apprehend God uh, is going to be different to you. So we recognize that we're all different in that. And so there's no one size fits all by any means. Um, and uh, things like retreats as well and uh, sabbaticals we've mentioned and time off um, and, and um, places where we can go, where we can get refreshed and renewed and, and ministered to is really important. So uh, it is very flexible. It's really down to, to what, what uh, kind of theological, spiritual uh, streams you like to move in, uh, but, but go with what is natural. But I would also encourage you from time to time to find something that will be a bit challenging and a bit different and a bit out of your normal uh, experience, because I think we often grow through being put out of uh, our usual box and into a, a position where we uh, maybe explore a different kind of spirituality or a different uh, theological approach to something. Uh, and that's always refreshing and, and, and helpful. Great. I don't know if that's your question, but that's, uh, that, that's a few thoughts. Oh, a commendation. Yeah. So I would say uh, um, give it a go. I mean, you've got nothing to lose. <laughs> uh, it's not that the Baptist Union is checking up on you. It's really about uh, helping you to grow and to develop. Uh, and, and I would really strongly encourage it because I think it, it is going to help us to uh, avoid things like burnout and uh, weariness in ministry and all those problems that we recognise, particularly at this time of pandemic, uh, are, are really big uh, issues. Those of us who are really engaging seriously with the CMD, I think will be more resilient uh, to, to all the currents of uh, uh, challenges of life. And so uh, this, is, this is a wonderful opportunity that we've got. So let's take it and grasp it and use it uh, and uh, uh, make the most of it. We're a really gift to each one of us and a gift for the kingdom and a gift to uh, uh, the ministries that we uh, 
exercise. And, and just to say, this is not just for accredited ministers, this is for all ministers, whether you're accredited, unaccredited, locally recognized, whether you're retired or active, whether you're a chaplain in church or whatever, for all of us, this is something for all of us so that we might grow as the people of God serving in the kingdom of God. And we'd like to invite you to uh, zoom in with us and walk through these things. It's more of a, a question and chat opportunity to explore what CMD means, how we can actually engage in that. And so on Monday, the 19th of April at 10 a.m., we're going to have a, a Zoom opportunity for us just to talk. There won't be huge amounts of input. It'll be us talking about how we can help each other, how we can help you uh, engage with CMD. So thank you for listening and God bless you in your ministries. And thank you, Paul, for sharing today.